All right, guys. You guys want to blow up your back? Sorry, blow my back up. You want a mass building back workout? Try this. You want bulging lats? You want Tyrannosaurus tra traps? You guys want lats like Dorian Yates with half the work and half fucking genetics? You want to figure out how to not work hard, get big? You want this is the shortcut channel. There's a lot of talk lately because uh, a friend of mine, fellow bro chat, star. Uh, <laughs> Ian, Ian announced his retirement. This is not news to anybody. We all wish Ian well. Ian's a good, great fucking guy. But it just got me thinking like his reasoning for retiring are his, his reasons. His reasons for retiring are obviously his reasons. He has his own individual reasons, but of course everyone when they, when they're in bodybuilding and they're in the, mid, the middle of it, they understand like it's almost like you, when you're younger, you first get into the sport, especially you guys who are like kind of my age or came up when I did, like you kind of got into the sport with like reckless abandon. Like it was just like, I know I was like, I didn't give a fuck. Like people told me, oh man, you're gonna, you're pumping two grams of gear a fucking a, a week and you're, you're doing this and this and you're like, are you, I'm like, I'm not even keeping track of anything. I haven't got my blood work done in fucking four years. Like back in the day, I was like that, right? Just like you just it, it's like you have to wonder how like the guys that did that obviously they reached a certain level not to say Ian did this I'm not speaking about Ian now but like guys and like who want to be the best at something could be football could be NASCAR racing like there comes a point where you have to understand the fine balance between reckless abandon and like self-preservation like how hard am I willing to how hard and how long am I willing to push this before I'm like, oh man, like this could, the net impact of this could really catch up to me later on in life. And like mine's catching up with me because I have fucking a fake hip and a fake shoulder. And it's not from sitting on a couch. Like some of you clowns out there living on your computer, working out an hour a day, not even moving any weight, being a fucking bitch. It's like you played sports, you know what I mean? Pushed, lifted heavy weights. Didn't, I had total disregard for my body. Did not care. I would run full tilt, tackle someone, put my, like, it, even if it risked hurting me, right? And the same thing, I would load up the bar and try and squat whatever weight with thinking, like, I don't give a fuck if I blow my knee out or I fucking blow my back out. I'm moving this weight, right? So it's just, it, it, you wonder at what, at what point in your life do you, when you do reach that point where, like, reckless abandon starts to take a backseat to self preservation and you're like, oh man, like, uh, as soon as that hesitation creeps in your mind, it's either one time to completely change up the way you do stuff, like literally revert to another style of training or another style of living, or it's time to walk away. Because like, that's your body giving you a little nudge, like, hey man, or even a check, like, hey, keep going down this path, watch what happens to you. It's like we talked about before, you're, you'll learn, you learn by brain or you learn by pain. And if you, if your body's sending you signals like, hey, right, last week on that squat, you tweaked your back a little bit, right? Well, that, guess what next time is? You're gonna blow your back out. Like, I <laughs> mean, so it's like, but you have to understand, it's hard to like discern that voice as being a bitch voice in your head. Like, oh, I don't wanna do it. Or it's like, like this shit is not going well, man. We're on a dark path here. It's a path to nowhere. Like pull back and take another step in another direction, right? Well, if I could go back, I would've. Like, but I also wouldn't trade my experiences for the world because it, it allows me to pass on information to other people to help them, right? Whether they listen or not remains to be seen. But I have a lot of people who write me thanking me for showing them this style of training. They haven't felt this good in years. They're like, they're, this used to hurt, it doesn't hurt anymore. And that's how it should be. Work out, working out is supposed to be enjoyable. It's not supposed to be painful. Like, it may be painful after. It's like you're sore from the actual tearing down a muscle but like it shouldn't be it shouldn't be this thing that like every week I just got to make it through this because like my knees are fucked and this and that like I'm going to these extreme measures like these guys are out there that are like they're getting on in their career they're going to like extreme measures to be able to keep doing what they're doing whether it's like PRP or fucking stem whatever it could be like this regenerative stuff that's apparently going to regenerate bashed out worn out fucking shoulders knees hips whatever right it's like, that's not the answer, guys. Because your answer right there is in the problem. You're doing too much. 
you need to scale back. You need to cut those lifts out that are causing you problems. You need to move on to other stuff. You need to train in a different style. It's not just like, get me healthy again so I can be an idiot again. That's all you're telling your body. Or I'm trying to get myself healthy so that I can do stupid shit again and not, and like grow, grow, grow. It's like, just scale it back, man. And everything will be a lot better. Working out will be a lot more enjoyable. You'll, your body will feel good again. It's like the, fa the fact that you think you have to get under a five plate squat, six plate squat to get your legs to grow, especially after a certain point of development is insanity to me. It's like, it's crazy. So the equivalent to saying like, I want to get as big as possible. So I'm going to eat as much as I can. Every meal I eat my every, every meal I eat, I'm going to eat till I throw up every meal. It's like, would you think about, would you do that? Cause that sounds ridiculous, right? That's the stupidest thing you've ever heard. That's the same way as training that way. I'm going to go in there every day and blow my body out to the point where like, I can barely fucking recover from this. And then I'm going to come back the next time and do it again. Like, why don't you just eat a little bit of food? Why don't you just do a nice workout? Get the benefits and walk away. Like, throw some dessert in here and there. Push yourself, you know, but not the object is not to... Pain doesn't equal progress. I just came up with that. That's fucking really good. There's all these pressing tutorials. I saw like a fucking video the other day where like it shows the guy like set up his dumbbells and like he locks, it shows like animation, like it locks into his like serratus and then he like turns and it like boom, the pecs light up and all that stuff talking about how you need to lock down. You want to know the easiest pec, the easiest chest press tutorial you'll ever see and anybody can do it and it takes two seconds. So if I get in the push up position on a mirror, I put my hands on like I'm in a push up right on the ground, but I'm on the mirror. I'm gonna lay, I'm gonna be far enough back that I can fall into my chest here and be off here. So if my face is on the mirror and my arms are tucked into my lats, elbows low, where I should be pressing from, shoulders tucked down, retracted in scapula, my chin's back and my chest is up like we talk about. So if I wanna get off this mirror without moving my hands off the mirror, how would I do that? I'd be here. Or my hands could be here. Wherever my press line is, I press away. So I can't move my hands. So if you do the same thing, keep your hands glued to the mirror, pull your chin back, put your chest up, shoulders back, get yourself away from the mirror. Because one thing you're definitely not gonna do is do this. But all of you, when you press weight, do that. So it's not, I'm not trying to press this mirror away from me. I'm not trying to push this mirror. I'm trying to get away from the mirror by pressing off. But all my weight's still here. So it's the same thing as if you're at the negative of a press. So if I'm in a negative of a press, this is now this is now the mirror. So imagine my face is against the mirror, chest is here. When I go to push, I pushed away. It's the exact same thing that I just did there. And now I have weight on my hand. But for some reason, when everybody holds weight in their hand and gets here, they freak the fuck out. They can't lock down into their back. They can't hold stabilize on their palm and their lat. They get freaked out here and they try to move right away. Or they go like this and elbow rolls over. So the press becomes, instead of this falling back, it becomes, even if they fall back a little, it goes. Uh, so you see the rollover of the elbow. You rolling over your elbow is the number one reason why your chest sucks. So if you see your elbows doing that on the press, where I'm here and my line out should be here, lifting up through things, if it starts to be this and deviate, this elbow deviates out, you're fucked. That's why your chest isn't growing. Or like parts of your chest are growing and other parts aren't. Because you're just using shoulder and tricep to jam a weight out, right? And it'll be, it'll be obnoxious for anyone that tries it, especially if you're really weak with your press because you're not gonna be able to press much weight. But like we talked about, if you're trying to reprogram stuff, it has to start somewhere, right? So if you notice when you're pressing, you look in the mirror and you start to see this elbow do this, when you move, start again. Push to where it doesn't move. Push to where it doesn't move. Eventually it'll just lock right out, right? So that's the most basic tutorial. Literally, it's the only one you need. Do that with, do that with anybody, do that with yourself. Then go sit on a machine, complete, completely copy the movement. There's your press. You don't need to pay people to teach you all this stuff.
Just think about that every time you press. A perfect press is a perfect push-up mechanic. That's why they do push-ups, right? As many of you know, I keep up with trends of society. I'm super up on all the verbiage and all the fucking pronouns. Yeah. I just love it so much. But uh, yeah, like I said before, I've said other times, like society and the gym kind of parallel each other. There's a lot of nonsense going on in the gym. There's a lot of a lot more nonsense going on in society, right? In terms of people telling you how you should think, how you should speak what you should do, what you shouldn't do, what's appropriate, what's not. It's like, when it comes down to it, it's like, I, I'm cool with whatever anyone wants to do, as long as it's not affecting me or anyone I know, or like being pressed upon me like unjustly, like you have to be this way, I don't have to do anything I don't want to do, right? I don't have to speak any way either, right? Or I don't, at the gym, for example, I don't have to lift a certain way because someone told me I need to lift that way, or like some dipshit from years ago this is the best way to train. There's only one way. It's like, yeah, anyway, dude, it's like, it's like, it's, it's just stuff that like, if you really sit back and you're kind of like me, it's like, you kind of sit back and you're like, I just want to like be able to like, I wish I could just hang like a door hanger like they have in hotels, like on my back or like from my headphones that says do not disturb. So like when you see that on my shirt or you see that on my headphones or you hear it on my like, I put it around me, I wear it on a hoodie, maybe it's on a shirt, who knows? One day it could be on a shirt. It's just like, you sh that should be a sign to everybody to just fuck off. Like, keep your shit with yourself, like keep all your shit that you have going on in your own head and leave me the fuck out of it. Whether it's some, someone who's wearing one of these outside in their car for no reason. I mean, I don't wanna say it because we'll get fucking a strike on us apparently, get banned again. <laughs> but it's like, you know, just, this whole idea of like, I'm just gonna do what I do and I'm gonna go about being who I am as a person and just taking care of myself and being good, the people I care about. But all this other nonsense is just block that shit out. Like, do not disturb me with that. Like, leave me the fuck out of it. And like, you wanna cry and dye your hair four different colors and complain about how the world's not fair? Or you guys in the gym wanna fucking bitch and moan about how someone said you're supposed to move, another person said you're not supposed to move, you're supposed to be rigid, it's supposed to be this angle, it's like, yeah, do what you do and just fuck off, leave me alone. Like, like if you like what I say, cool, if you don't like what I say, then fuck me too, right? Do not disturb me. I wanna get Eddie Cohen to come here and just do a seminar about how stupid people are. <laughs> we'll put bands on all the benches and when Eddie gets here, he'll lose his mind and just cut them all. We'll bring him like uh, hedge clippers. <laughs> all the powerlifting, all the powerlifting bros will cry in their short shorts and their fucking swimming shoes that they deadlift in. <laughs> My water shoes. It's like, are you guys really paying for those? Like, how much are those shoes? With the Velcro and the fucking water shoes. Oh, at least two hundred. Do you know that that they, you can get that from like? You can order that shit from China in bulk for like three dollars a pair. Oh, yeah. Anyone who tells you that they're fucking special rubber on the bottom, it's nonsense, guys. Stop paying for those shoes. Deadlift barefoot if you want to. Why are you wearing those stupid fucking shoes? Not to mention you look like an idiot. Like, and the only guys wearing them that you're paying attention to, guess what? They're being paid to wear them. Yeah. They're not wearing them out of choice. They're putting those little two little Velcro straps across their shoe and like. Twinkle toeing it over to the fucking, has nothing to do with them pulling 800 pounds. Oh, I connected so much better thanks to these twinkle toe bitch shoes I was wearing. Should be over to the bench like, 